Hello. Can you guys hear me? All right. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, I'm Hamel, been involved in management standards activity in DMTF for more than 13 years. Uh, and uh, I, I was uh, along with Intel and Broadcom when we founded PMCA Workgroup. That was 13 plus years ago when we started this standards effort. Uh, my daytime role is I am a lead architect at uh, Broadcom for our Ethernet controller product line. So in this talk, uh, what we are going to do is we have been talking about these PMCI standards. So we'll get into some more details on what are these standards are. Uh, we'll give you an overview of it and where we are going. Uh, I'll cover the second part of the talk. Patrick will start with the overview of PMCI and walk, walk us through the protocol stack. Patrick Samuel. So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Patrick Caporell. I'm principal architect at Lenovo in the data center group. Uh, I'm also co-chair along with Hamel of the PMCI working group of the DMTF and uh, vice president of marketing as well for the DMTF. Um, let's talk about you know, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, the primary workshop goal we have is really to inform the OCB community about how projects can take advantage and, and uh, adopt existing and emerging PMCI standards that are being worked on within the DMTF.org. And there are benefits there as it can provide that interoperable management interfaces and data models for what we're going to term inside the box communication. So things that you know, reside within a platform management subsystem and the interconnect within them and how they talk to each other. One example is the current project of OCP NIC 3.0 is in fact leveraging a number of the PMCI standards uh, for key management functions and, and the latest design specification includes those as requirements. So when we look at a whole um, view from a DMTF perspective and what's available, there are actually a number of standards applicable to the OCP platforms. Um, and, and the DMTF organization as a whole uh, really looks to develop open manageability standards uh, spanning, again, a very diverse and emerging uh, set of traditional IT infrastructure. So on the left side, uh, you'll see a, a traditional OCP server, which will be comprised of a number of elements from OCP hardware management. You may have an OCP NIC, such as the OCP 3.0 uh, NIC uh, that is a current project. And when you look at what's available from DMTF, there have been earlier presentations and talking about Redfish and OCP profiles. Um, so you have a, a Redfish and a Redfish client can certainly communicate uh, to the server and a service provider that is available and provide those uh, OCP uh, profiles for Redfish. But when we get into the server, um, you're you know, likely to have a BMC, and you're going to start looking at some of these available standards from the PMCI working group, which include NCSI, MCTP, and PLDM, which we'll describe a little more in detail in subsequent charts. Those are really the set of PMCI standards that we offer today. And when you look at that BMC, um, one note is that from an open BMC perspective, um, there have been some initial MCTP and PLDM implementation contributions recently submitted as, uh, as recent as uh, December of uh, 2018. So again, more ongoing work of, of driving those PMCI standards into uh, open uh, environments. So a little bit of the history of the PMCI working group. Hemel kind of mentioned it because he's certainly been around since its formation. But what does PMCI stand for? First of all, it's Platform Management Component Intercommunications. We usually like to just use the word PMCI. It's a little easier to state. Um, the group was formed in 2005, where the first specifications became available two years later. But we have seen over a decade of implementations within the server and the desktop product space. The PMCI suite of standards, again, really targets the inside the box communications and those functional interfaces between those components that make up, and I'll show a picture in a moment, that platform management subsystem. Now, the PMCI working group gets together and we create the standards and specification and then release them up to the DMTF.org website for MCTP, PLDM, and NCSI. So some of the applicability to OCP we have, again, OCP NIC 3.0 design spec, the 0.85B, uh, in fact, earlier versions as well, 
um, leverages and requires multiple PMCI standards, some of which are listed here. When you look at MCTP base specification, the NCSI spec, along with various PLDM specifications to do things like firmware update or even monitoring control to get thermal uh, sensing or link state sensing, et cetera. And there was actually some discussions over in the OCP th uh, 3.0 NIC uh, you know, sessions earlier today on this. Now, in addition, PMCI standards can also be complementary to those OCP Redfish profiles, again, uh, that the hardware management project uh, has adopted. So when you look at a, a, a newer spec, uh, we actually have a work in progress currently published by the DMTF. Uh, DSP 218 is known as PLDM for Redfish device enablement. It really looks to bridge Redfish from the external facing um, provider that is available today and kind of bring that in. It, it does a, a binary encoded JSON to carry that down to components within the server, um, but that's really a, a way that it can complement the OCP uh, Redfish profiles. And of course, there's all the other specs, including the ones already available for 3.0 uh, that can provide that as well. So if you look at a picture of the platform management subsystem, this is kind of the PMCI architecture. Uh, traditionally, it starts with the BMC kind of in the center of the picture. And as you walk around clockwise, there are host interfaces available um, between the management controller and, and whether it's uh, MCTP bound to serial or KCS or Redfish has a network host interface available. Um, DMTF offers a number of standards for, again, the external facing. So that would, of course, include Redfish. That's kind of on the right side of the chart. If you go down to the bottom, that's where a lot of that inside the box really comes into play. You have physical interfaces such as PCI, UE, you've got SMBUS, uh, RBT, which is RMII-based transport. And, and you're going to have a collectiveness of you know, managed devices and network controllers that uh, may or may not communicate to the external network. You might just have a, a device that just doesn't have an Ethernet connection. That would be kind of a, applicable to the managed device category. So the managed device uh, to an MC, uh, you know, you've got applicable standards such as MCTP. You've got PLDM over MCTP. NCSI over MCTP. And also even MVMI, MVMEMI over MCTP. Um, on the NC side, with the RBT interface, you also have the direct NCSI standard, uh, as well as the ability to leverage PLDM over RBT. And, and lastly, if there are multiple MCs in a platform, you could certainly have that communication as well, leveraging MCTP and PLDM. And one final chart that I have for turning over to Hamill is kind of from a, a, a stack perspective, because a lot of what we do in PMCI is, is uh, you know, looking at layers and building on transports and then data models on top of the transports. So at the, the lowest level, you kind of have a physical layer. Um, RBT starting at the left is, is, is sort of a little bit of physical and a little bit of the transport, so it's kind of combined together. But then you have uh, PCIe, I2C, SMBus, and we have announced, and you can see there's uh, some future uh, items there in terms of supporting binding of MCTP to I3C and uh, Gen Z as well. Uh, we have current uh, work registers in place uh, to support that. The MCTP layer is really riding on, on top of all of that with uh, applicable bindings. Uh, Hemel will go into this in a little more detail around each one of these bindings, but the little gray area boxes really show how we actually can bind the transport um, of MCTP down to each one of those physical layers. And then going up the stack, uh, you get into, again, PLDM or NCSI uh, specifications. And we have a, a suite of PLDM specs. You can see them all there. And again, this really represents that over 10 years worth of uh, standardization from the PMCI working group. Um, but we have MCTP control. And all the way on the right, you can see uh, in the green, security future. Uh, James's presentation uh, just before us here talked a lot about manageability security. So again, there's efforts around securing uh, and, and providing that over MCTP that the uh, work group of PMCI is, is looking to take on. Uh, that's my last chart. I'm going to turn it over to Hemel now, who's going to take you through some more detail on, on each one of these layers. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Patrick. Uh, this, this is a very important chart to go over. Uh, as Patrick mentioned, uh, this is the PMCI protocol stack, and I want to just give some history. From day one, when we looked at the internal communication between components, 
we wanted to build a really lightweight stack, but it had similarities like what you can imagine from TCP IP style stack. And that's where you see the separation here that we have a transport layer in the middle, which is physical medium independent. And on top of that, there are a bunch of messaging layers built into. And then workgroup defined a number of physical transport binding, which allows that transport to be carried over multiple uh, physical medium. So if you really think from protocol stack standpoint, this is what uh, a protocol stack you can think about, which is suited for internal communication between components you will find within a platform management subsystem. So that, that's the whole genesis behind how this was built. And over the years, this has expanded. We have added more binding. We have added more messaging layer. But the architecture stayed the same. So with that, uh, I'm just going to provide some more details on each of the, the three main tenants here, right? MCTP, we have been talking about NCSI and PLDL. So what is MCTP? So think, think about this like a transport. This is similar to your TCP IP, but much lighter weight, meant to be communication between the components within platform, which could be an 8-bit microcontroller all the way up to the CPU. So you need to scale to that. Uh, but the fundamental thing here is when you build this kind of transport, you want to have transport independent from the underlying physical medium. And that's where some of the basic design principles of MCTB came into picture that it has built-in support for packetization, so it has basic fragmentation reassembly capability. It has the very simple logical addressing capability. It allows you to have static and dynamic addressing built on top of underlying physical medium, so you can use logical addresses at the transport level. That's all part of the definition. And then whenever you have this transport, you need to have some kind of built-in capability so that you can discover what each endpoint supports. And that's where the control protocol definition comes into picture. So that's fundamental MCTP definition and how it went about. We initially started with SMBus and PCA VDM uh, bindings. And then later it has been expanded to that. MCTP also has, yes. Right. I'll, I'll get onto that at the end. Uh, so so why, why don't we hold on to that? We, uh, at the end, I have a slide on security, what we are doing, and then we can talk about it. Okay? So the last thing I want to mention on MCTP is built into MCTP is ability for it to carry multiple message types. And that's very important because we, we have built this transport, but we want to have multiple messaging layers uh, that are layered on top of that. And that's where uh, you have the control layer, the platform level data model, which is a messaging layer, which I'll go into detail. You can also carry network controller sideband type of communication on top of MCTP. Uh, it has been also extended by NVMe to carry NVMe MI messages over MCTP. So there has been several layers defined uh, on top of MCTP. So that's, uh, just to summarize, this is the base transport, which allows you to communicate between the components without having any physical medium in, uh, dependence. And it, it has built into it the packet, packetization and logical addressing capability. This one shows you in more detail how it looks like. Uh, again, the idea here is to be more bit efficient uh, and have lightweight type of transport without compromising some of the basic transport capability. So you see, whenever MCTP packets are sent over a specific physical medium, you will have physical medium specific header and trailer that will come as a part of the binding MCTP over that physical medium. And then in the middle, that orange color you see, that's your base header, which goes in every packet, which carries your source and destination addresses. Also, you see a bunch of flags that are used to identify packet sequence which allows you to do packet fragmentation and reassembly, as well as detect 
packet missing in the sequence. And then we have also concept of message tagging, which has several uses. One of the uses, this allows you to have traffic being tagged differently so that you can have multiple queues on the other side. Also, by having this kind of tag, when you have request responder type of communication, you can provide this tag in the request and responder returns you with that tag, which allows the original requester to match the incoming responder. Uh, and while the packets are coming in, that can be served by a separate queue, which is tied to that tag. So that, that's what you see in here. That's your MCTP-based transport header. Then in the packet, every packet carries payload. And the way to think about this is you have one or more packet carrying the entire message, uh, which is part of the MCTP packet payload here, which is shown. Only the first packet will carry the message type. That's how you identify within MCTP message, which is fragmented into multiple packets, what message is being carried in. So for example, if that type says it's PLDM, then this MCTP message, which gets broken down into one or more packets, will carry one PLDM message. So that's how the whole messaging layer works. We also have an optional capability to have the message being integrity checked across multiple packets. Uh, in addition to that, you can have physical medium specific per packet uh, checks. And I'll show in next slide, uh, like for SMBus, uh, uh, one slide after this. Uh, so this allows you to also have this kind of physical medium specific integrity check, as well as you can have message level integrity check. These are all the physical bindings, mediums that are already defined. We have SMBus I2C binding, MCTP, that's already standardized. That was more than a decade ago. MCTP PCI VDM uh, was also published a decade ago. We recently added Gen 4, Gen 5 capabilities. So now it covers all the PCIe generations that you can think of in the future. Uh, we also had, for the host interface type of communication between host and BMC. We define MCTP or KCS and MCTP or serial. This was more to serve the legacy use cases. Recently, what we have been working with, and we have alliance partnership between DMTF on, uh, with I3C and Gen Z. So we are working on defining binding to carry MCTP traffic all over those bus or Gen Z fabric. So that's in the works. Here, this shows you how a binding will look like. So MCTP or SMBus binding. You can see you have SMBus specific header, which has physical medium specific addressing of both the destination and slave. The way MCTP or SMBus works is it builds on top of block write protocol. So you need to support block write protocol. It requires multi-master support. And in order to support at least 64 byte of baseline MTU, we extended the SMBus uh, block size transfer to at least contain. If you add all these bytes up, including the packet error correct code, you need to have 73 bytes of minimum SMBus packet size to be supported. So that's, that's what you see as, as a binding, that header includes the byte count, it indicates I'm carrying within this SMBus block write packet, MCTP is carried within the payload of that SMBus packet. You see the MCTP packet error, as well as the packet payload. And at the end, the entire MCTP or SMBus packet is pr protected by the packet error correcting code. So this is how a binding looks like. We have similar binding for MCTP PCI VDM, where the header and the trailer will be PCI VDM specific. And that's the idea here that once we have defined this underlying base transport per physical medium, we will have specification how to use MCTP over that medium. So that gives you an overview of what MCTP is, base transport, several physical binding, how the packetization works. Uh, let me go to the second tenant of uh, PMCI standard. 
This is NCSI, and you may have heard uh, this quite a lot in number of talks here, including OCP NIC 3.0. What NCSI, it stands for Network Controller Sideband Interface. Uh, originally, it started with the NCSI physical medium independent aspect as well as RMII based transport being put in the single spec. And that was the first NCSI specification. What it is based on is you want to, at that time the use case was you have a NIC in the system which is primarily used for host traffic. Now the management traffic also wants to use that. I call that as a shared NIC model. So out of that shared NIC model came the requirement, we need to define a sideband interface which allows a BMC to interface with the network controller and that enables a model where on the same network you can have host traffic as well as management traffic going on. And in order to control that management traffic which is primarily passed through from the NIC standpoint, where BMC can control that pass through traffic using command response type of protocol. So that's where all those three types uh, of traffic come into picture. The pass-through is the management traffic, which is communicated via network controller. So it originates from BMC and goes to network on the transmit and receives its vice versa where NIC does the filtering and provides the management traffic. So this is the model where outgoing traffic from host and BMC is merged by the NIC. Incoming traffic is basically filtered and split by the NIC. So that's, that's the data path or pass-through traffic. Then the second type, this goes only between BMC and network controller. This is the NCSI control. This is how you control the pass-through communication. This is how you set up the filter. In addition to that, this is how the BMC can get to NIC and get to a lot of inventory, monitoring, control kind of information. So it can query statistic on a given port it can get to the link state on a given port. So those are some examples of how the NCSI control is used to do, and it's all command response protocol. Requester here is always the BMC, and responder is always the network controller. So that's the second type of traffic. Uh, I give you some examples of what kind of commands it can have. And the third one is NCSI has built into it is the notification model. What this is, is at the NCSI control level, BMC can go to NIC and subscribe for specific NIC specific events. Examples, if link is going up or down, if driver that is running on top of a given function is uh, unloaded. So once BMC subscribes to those events, then this is an asynchronous event that a NIC can provide to BMC. So it's, it's, it's the third type of traffic which NCSI defined, which allows NIC to notify BMC about the events that BMC is interested in. So NCSI as a spec is built on basically those three types of traffic. Originally, as I said, it had the tra it, it, transport binding or RMII. So we took the RMII interface, the physical medium is RMII point to point, you can think about this between NIC and BMC. Uh, the frame format that was used for the control traffic, of course, the pass-through was all Ethernet based. And then because we wanted to support a model where a BMC on that NCSI bus can have multiple NC connected, so you can think about this as a multi-drop bus. So NCSI or RBT binding defined that hardware arbitration mechanism which allows a management controller to have multiple NC sitting on the same bus and arbitrate between them for uh, communication between BMC and NC. So that was the first binding that was defined over NCSI. Later on, we defined binding of NCSI or MCTP. The benefit of doing this is now you can have NCSI communication over any MCTP capable medium. So this allows you to have, if you go to a PCI NIC where you may not have RMII connectivity, but you may have PCI, of course it's a PCI NIC, you have PCI VDM as well as SM bus connectivity. You can use NCSI or MCTP to just do the control communication with the PCI NIC using standard transport and standard protocol. 
as well as you can support a pass-through model, which is also defined in NCSI or MCTP, where you can switch between the medium and, for example, you can only do control over SM bus, and when you go to PCIe VDM, that's where you can use the same in-band PCIe VDM channel to send your traffic that goes on the network. So that, that, that was the second binding. Uh, and as I said, it supports uh, all the MCTP capability, and NCSI is just built on top of that. Because this is all MCTP network-based, there was no need to define any hardware arbitration. So that, that was the second piece, a uh, quick overview of NCSI. And the final piece here is the PLDM. So PLDM is, think about this is a low-level data model, which is meant to be more uh, compute lightweight as well as bit efficient so that your components within the platform can exchange this information in efficient manner as well as the amount of processing and memory footprint needed to provide this data uh, is much lower than what you will use externally. So this enables model like a simple device, sensor device can expose sensor data using PLDM. Uh, it also enables BIOS to communicate its uh, data with the BMC using low-level uh, data model here. So that's how the PLDM uh, uh, came into picture. It's a purely messaging layer, and it has built into it the base layer, which defines the request response type, type of communication. And on top of that, PLDM allows you to have, there is a subtype, so the way that subtype works is you group a set of functionality or feature set together, to define that PLDM subtype. And supporting a given subtype means you support the required commands for that specific type. And I'm gonna quickly go over some of the subtypes we have defined. Um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna skip PLDM or MCTP binding, but here are the types that are currently defined. We have the base transport, uh, base messaging layer, PLDM, which basically defines the basic format of PLDM message, and it defines the basic discovery operation. Then there are a number of other PLDMs defined. PLDM for SM BIOS, this allows you to use PLDM style communication to transfer SM BIOS data. PLDM for BIOS control and configuration, that's primarily used to provide the BIOS settings, BIOS configuration information, exchange that between management controller and the BIOS. Uh, PLDM for platform monitoring control has built-in sensor and effector data as well as event, eventing model. So this is for the low-level communication of sensor data, uh, low-level event information to be communicated. That's supported by that. Uh, the more recent ones, uh, PLDM for FRU, this is where without really exposing FRU content directly, you can have a FRU data transfer using PLDM and this can be used to access different FRU data uh, by the BMC from the devices. And uh, PLDM for firmware update, this is the model which enables out-of-band update of firmware. So BMC basically can initiate firmware uh, update on a device, and then PLDM for firmware update defines a pull model where device can pull the firmware images, and then there are self-activation uh, as well as the activation on next reset kind of model supported by this. Redfish, as uh, Patrick mentioned, one of the challenge with Redfish is if BMC has to support all possible schemas that a device can expose, it's very complicated for a single service to support that. Additionally, the device vendor may have better knowledge of what kind of uh, capability they have. So Redfish for device extension which pretty much extends the Redfish model to now allow Redfish operation using PLDM and without requiring every single device to support the entire Redfish stack. Uh, and this way, a management controller can act as a proxy to the outside world, but internally it can use a PLDM for Redfish operation. So I have one minute as John was talking about. So I covered the three basic uh, tenets of what PMCI standard is. We have been recently working on the security group. So security is becoming 
more and more important. Everybody's talking about now, what about within the platform? Uh, so we, we have uh, alliance with TCG and we, we are working in the PMCI group. We have created a security task force. We are in the process of defining security data model as well as basic device authentication, firmware measurement type of capabilities. We have goal here is to not require changes to the existing hardware silicon, but build a layer of security protocol which one can use using the PMCI standard to extend the security to the platform management subsystem and to the devices. Uh, this allows one to extend the root of trust kind of uh, capability within platform where you can have multiple root of trust kind of work together uh, using this type of data model. So, So, so uh, the answer to that question is there are already existing silicon the, where people are building root of trust into it, and they can leverage this security uh, capability. So there, there are, and again, uh, this is work in progress. Once we release, uh, I encourage people to go and provide their feedback onto the security data model. We are planning to have our first work in progress release. We're working on it very aggressively. Plan is to release spec this year. Uh, that'll be the first version of the security spec coming out of PMCA. So we, uh, in DMTF, if you go to uh, DMTF standard space, there is a work in progress link. If you go there, you will find work in progress release of DMTF. Yeah, you will, there are two specs uh, or two sets of documents which will come out pretty soon. So you go there and it will be obvious that they are security related. All right. So call to action. Uh, make sure you uh, join the server mass group as well as look at the PMCI standards which are being incorporated in a lot of platforms. And if you want to learn more about it, as there are a bunch of links here. Uh, we already have alliance with OCP, and we continue to work on this in hardware management group. This is where both Redfish and PMCI come together. With that, I'm going to stop. Right, so thank you. So we're uh, after time, so if, we'll, if you have questions, you guys can head We can take offline. Forward.